My name's Simon Hayes, I'm the Chief Technical Officer for Microforte. I've been working on the big world technology now for about three years. My name's Paul McInnes, I'm the uh, lead designer on the Big World Citizen Zero project. Um, I'm an anthropologist by background who's uh, been employed by Microforte partly because online games are so very social. Um, Citizen Zero itself is a massively multiplayer online action adventure game set in a, few, in a fairly near future kind of setting, so it's gritty science fiction. The main planet for Citizen Zero, main world is a place called Neo Eden, which is originally established as a penal colony. Um, the prisoners get free and make themselves its own frontier kind of society, basically. It's not unlike Australia, and I think it's a fairly good source of inspiration. One of the things that's very different between Citizen Zero Worlds and Australia is the fact that there is this technology called a machina technology, which is this kind of self-replicating technology, which is used to construct the colony, but also then inhabits the world. So one of the things you do, which we aren't showing here, is you can go up and you can interact with and fight a whole series of different kind of robotic creatures effectively. And uh, it's a great way of creating a whole bunch of interesting gameplay, in effect, um, and adds a very strong science fiction element to the world. So it's not just you versus the environment, there's also this dealing with a machine kind of element to it all, which gives it, I guess, a kind of semi-cyberpunk kind of feel to it, but, but, but very different from your traditional, um, you know, Gibson-style cyberpunk. So there's, there's a strong element of interacting with a machine, but very much in this kind of rich natural environment. As you can see, this is the tech demo, so it shows some science fiction elements taken from Citizen Zero, some science fiction elements which are just part of the demo, and a bunch of fantasy elements thrown together. But a lot of the actual functionality that we've developed, and we can show off in the demo, actually comes from Citizen Zero itself. We've really spent a lot of time working on the technology, trying to make sure that for the game there are very few limitations. We try to get rid of all the limitations that have been present in massively multiplayer games in the past. Because we want them to look you know, as good as first person shooters, to have high interactivity. When you're doing combat with someone, we don't want people to be just pressing one key and just waiting to see what happens. We want to have action game style combat, those sort of things. So there are a lot of problems to solve in doing that. So the ambition of Citizen Zero is it plays like a, pure, a, a real action game. It doesn't play like a traditional MOG, but it's set in the big persistent universe. From evidence coming from this conference, that's the direction that these kind of games are going to be going, much more along down the action path. Now the world you can see here is very detailed. You know, there's detail objects on the ground, which of course are animating. Uh, the textures are all high resolution. You see some of the inhabitants of the world here. These are, these are strips, um, completely harmless, little animals. One of the nice things about the engine is that you can have lots of things happening at once and it doesn't slow it down, which is great. And of course they're doing proper pathfinding, they know where the trees are, they're not going to be walking through, through trees or anything like that. Now we have a seamless world which can basically extend as far as you like and we can connect indoor and outdoor areas together. Um, here's what we call a frontier depot, which is basically like a, like a small city uh, in the wilderness. Simon's running you around now to show you some of the features. Um, particle systems, steam coming off the walls, those kind of things, all, all nice sexy graphics. One of the things we set out to do with Citizen Zero from the beginning was to be able to create fairly intricate urban spaces and populate them, not just with player characters, but with NPCs who actually do things. So here we have a bunch of fairly simple NPCs wandering around just showing that we can do the indoor pathfinding. So this has strong elements of, the, of, I guess, the look and feel you would see in, in Citizen Zero. This is stuff that we actually came out of a Citizen Zero demo that we did. Um, gives you some idea of the visual style. Uh, we build the characters using a multi-part system, so you can build them out of different components. So for instance, I can switch here among a couple of pre-made characters. Um, he's just a bit tired at the moment. A couple of pre-made characters, that, they're built using, using different components. Uh, we've got morphing systems in there, so you can see you know, at a, an extreme sort of thing. Um, you can completely morph a character to any shape at all. Normally that's used for expressions, like expressions on the face, that sort of thing. Um, you can do all sorts of weird things though, to build different character shapes, things like that. Now we also wanted high level of interaction between the players. So for instance, I want to get up to that, the ledge up there, but it's too far for me to reach. So I'm actually going to get Pimac to help me. Now first of all, I'll, I'll do a lift up and I'll push him up to there. That icon says that I'm offering Pimac a lift. So. And now, hopefully you'll offer me a lift in return. Are you going to do it? So I can just accept that.
Now that can happen any place in the world where it's too, you know, too high for the place to jump. If you've got two levels that are roughly the right distance apart, you know, you can use the character interaction like that to, um, to get it back. There's another example, you can do simple things like shaking hands, that sort of thing as well. Simon here is now showing off the Ripper, which is our one of our favourites. It's a little high-speed, single-person racing vehicle, basically. And one of the things we're looking at doing with Citizen Zero is, in addition to providing dynamic missions, um, so it's basically, if you like, Metal Gear Solid, cooperative Metal Gear Solid online at, at the kind of hardcore shoot 'em up mission level, but also providing a whole bunch of other things you can do in the world, which are interactive and fun, and obviously zipping around, ripping out one of these things is, is just a whole lot of fun. So within the game itself, there's a whole set of racing leagues you can join. Uh, you can develop your skills as a pilot. You can invest a large amount of time and energy developing, tweaking, customizing uh, your own particular vehicle. So the idea is that vehicles, for example, on their own could become an entire subculture within the game. And we think that bringing gamers of different kinds of interest together in the one world is one of those things that's going to give Citizen Zero a great deal of allure. Um, the game itself allows you to do a whole bunch of different things. As I said, the thing that makes it different are these dynamically generated missions. Um, what makes it some other things you can do though, you can go off and do the wilderness adventures, you can go off and hunt creatures. So the strips you saw in this demo, if you shoot them, kill them, you can take their legs to eat, as a very simple example. But in the game itself, there's a whole bunch of different things you can hunt and track down in, in the wilderness. So that if you get bored with doing urban missions or you get bored with running around the ripper, you can also go off and do more of the traditional kill and loot style adventure. But in a setting where it makes a bit more sense. And because you have this mission generation system where you go off and you do the Metal Gear Solid uh, System Shock to Counter-Strike style missions, it means we take pressure off doing the kill and loot stuff in the wilderness. It means the creatures you encounter in the wilderness actually behave like real creatures. So you come across a creature that's like a bear and it's in a bad mood. It might smack you. It doesn't have to smack you. It doesn't exist basically to be a bag of experience points. So the experience of being in the world is far more, more immersive, partly because the world itself behaves far more the way you'd imagine a space frontier kind of world would behave.